This is Mr. Handy's Blues. In the mid-20th century, W.C. Handy was one of America's most influential composers, music publishers, and entrepreneurs. A concert in Lewison Stadium, conducted by Leonard Bernstein and featuring his good friend Louis Armstrong, celebrated his long and storied career. The story begins in Florence, Alabama, where William Christopher Handy was born in 1873. His father, a newly freed slave, was a preacher and expected his son to get an education and a respectable job. My father said, Sonny, I'd rather follow you to your grave than to see you be a musician. Handy finished school, but soon abandoned his academic career in favor of a life as an itinerant musician. After several years on this path, he found himself sleeping under the Eads Bridge in St. Louis with no stable income. Music did bring me to the gutter. It brought me to sleep on the levee of the Mississippi River, broke and hungry. I could have returned to my hometown, but I decided on that levee to fight it out. Handy eventually found a job as an orchestra leader in Mississippi. It was there that he heard the primitive sounds of the Delta folk music. It is my good fortune to live for two years in the state of Mississippi and to hear the crude singing of the Negro down there. Eh-o, eh-o, I wouldn't live in Cairo. An accomplished music arranger, Handy was struck by the raw, untamed quality of the songs. He was inspired to formalize what he heard, writing it down and giving it structure. The result was a uniquely American genre of music that became known as the blues. Blues is the foundation to every music that, every genre of music that we listen to today. He took something that was oral, that was non-written, that was impolite and considered a rude, low-down musical form, just suitable for juke joints in the South, and uh, regularized it, formalized it, and in so doing, popularized it. In 1903, Handy moved to Memphis, Tennessee, where he worked as a band leader, a budding composer, and a savvy businessman. He made sure his blues songs were played up and down Beale Street. If Beale Street could talk, married men would have to take their beds and walk, except one or two who never drink booze, and the blind man on the corner who sings the Beale Street blues. Easy timer struck this bird today on a I have to think of Mr. Handy as a, a poet of the blues. Uh, many of his uh, images are uh, quite poetic in nature. And he was on the heart. time I went on a dancing with a Tennessee deer. They had a fella around them handy when a band you should hear. Handy began publishing his own songs, a first for African Americans in the early 20th century. The blues were becoming the rage in popular culture, and more artists were making records of his tunes. To maximize his exposure and exploit his talents, he moved his entire operation to Times Square in New York City. In the very early 1920s, this became a very important cultural epicenter. All the jazz musicians would go there, the ragtimers, the novelty musicians, the vaudeville musicians, and there were always Jewish and other white people rushing in and out of here trying to get the latest songs before the next guy that was appearing in the Zeke Bell Follies or whatever. Handy's most famous and most enduring composition was his homage to those dark days in the gutter when he struggled to survive as a musician in St. Louis. The songs like St. Louis Blues were so famous that by the 1920s, a group of Americans walking into a nightclub in Paris, the band struck up the St. Louis Blues as if it was the Star Spangled Banner. In 1954, Columbia Records producer George Avakian combined the musical genius of Louis Armstrong with the timeless blues of W.C. Handy. 
I was always in awe of him because of who he was. He commanded the room where he was at all times. It wasn't a case of, hey Bill, how you doing? <laughs> no, it was Mr. Handy all the way. That is my favorite Armstrong album of all. And it, frankly, it was Louis's favorite also. He's an icon. He uh, laid the foundation for those of the 20th and the 21st century, especially the 21st century. His contributions to American culture are vast, and as the people who were alive during his time begin to pass away and, and people forget about his accomplishment, it's time to focus again on who this man was and the wonderful things he did for America and, and for the world. <laughs>